Hi, I'm Natalie Portman. I'm an actress, and this is How I Got Here. My first job, I was 10 years old. I can't remember the name of it. It was like an off-off Broadway musical where I played a tap dancing monster that had three legs and the third leg was like a stick. So I had to like tap dance with the stick and I was like in a big furry monster suit. Can't believe I can't remember the name. I have to call my mom. How did you decide which career to pursue? Well, I was 10 years old and I loved performing. I loved dancing and singing and I would go to dance school and a lot of of the other kids, because I lived in the suburbs of New York, a lot of kids I knew were auditioning and doing commercials and Broadway shows and things like that. And so that's how I got the idea. Was there ever a time when you thought about giving up or changing career paths? Yes, in college and right after college, it was sort of a natural point to think like, oh, is this something I wanna do the rest of my life? And I did think about exploring other things and I think that kind of made me realize how much I loved acting and how sad I would be if I did anything else. What was the moment when you thought, I've made it? I still haven't had it yet. <laughs> I think that's what makes me like keep trying stuff because it doesn't feel like a destination, it feels like a, a journey. <laughs> What's been the biggest obstacle or setback you've ever had to face in your career and how did you overcome it? I mean, there have been many moments that have felt hard. I think one of the hardest times was I was 19 and I was doing a play in Central Park. I was doing The Seagull and it was Mike Nichols directing and it was this incredible cast. And I made the mistake of reading reviews after we opened and I read some bad reviews of myself, which of course I kept hearing in my head and then I had to go on stage and perform. Like if you read bad reviews of yourself and you're making a movie, it's already done. So it doesn't affect what you do. Maybe even the next time you'll think about it. But when you're doing a play, you have to go on every single night and perform. And it was, I was so, so frozen by it. And Philip Seymour Hoffman was in the play, who was so incredible. And I ran into his dressing room and I was crying and I was like, I don't know what to do. I feel like I can't go on. And he was so kind to me and he was like, remember, most people get to go to acting school and fall on their face while they're in school and no one's paying attention. You're doing it. You're learning in the public eye and like, you know, good and bad, all of it's important to like your growth process. And it was so helpful and helped me be able to go back on stage. Do you have any advice for coping with rejection? Oh, it hurts. I think it's normal for it to hurt. And the problem is you can't grow too thick a skin because as an actor, your whole job is being like sensitive and feeling things. So you don't want to like make yourself walled off. So I don't know. I think it's just being comfortable with the pain. How has your confidence grown throughout your career? And do you have any tips for boosting confidence? That's also hard. I always feel like I don't know what I'm doing and I should quit before I start. Like I'm always panicked right before I start. You know, I have to remind myself a lot like, oh, you've been doing this for a long time. You know, you know, like I have to give myself little pep talks. So I don't know if, um, I don't know if I have tips for that. I just feel like I struggle with it just like everybody else. What motivates you? Just curiosity. I'm always curious about parts of life that I haven't experienced on my own, I think. I think that's, you know, I never wanna play like a version of myself. I always wanna play someone who I find like very different than me and get to explore something that I haven't gotten to explore in my actual life. What is the career highlight that you feel proudest of and why? Well, making May December actually has been a real career highlight because it's actually the first feature film that my production company, Mountain A, produced. And I feel so proud that we were able to make this film possible because I feel so excited that people are responding to it so much. But when we tried to get it financed, no one wanted to give us money. You know, I think two female leads in a very morally complex story was very scary to a lot of people. And this kind of narrative where 
you kind of never know what to expect is very not in in style right now. I think it's like kind of movies that you would get in the 70s or something. So I feel so proud and happy that we were able to make it. And Todd Haynes is just the most brilliant director. And I feel so grateful and, and privileged to have worked with him. How do you choose which projects to take on and which to turn down? It's a similar thing of is this something I haven't done before? Does it feel dangerous or scary? Usually that that's a good sign to try it. And then of course, who else is on it? Who else is working on it from directors, actors? Because that really shapes the experience. What is something you still want to check off your professional bucket list? I would really love to do a voice in an animated film. I have not done that before. And you know, while my kids are still kids, I'd be really happy to get to do that. What does success look like to you? I guess to get to keep working. That's such, such a privilege. What's the most rewarding thing about working in your industry? So much, I mean, I feel like we get to play and pretend and imagine as a job. It's like being a kid perpetually and you get to explore so many different things like you get to live hundreds of lives. I've been an astronaut and a rock star and, you know, space senator, you know, like I've gotten to do so, so many, have so many different experiences, travel and meet people and work with people I admire. So it's a very, very lucky job and I never forget how lucky it is. What's the best piece of career advice you've ever been given? The first director I ever worked with in a film, Luc Besson, told me to only make one film every two years, which I haven't always stuck to, but it was a good message that it's important to live your life and important to allow yourself to rest and replenish because that is obviously like the most important thing is really to have a beautiful life. Thanks for watching How I Got Here with Harper's Bazaar.